I'm here on behalf of DeAndre Somerville, the community at large, and we're here in an, to kick off our effort for increased justice and equity here in Palm Beach County. Again, I want to thank everybody who came out here on this very warm day, particularly with the sun beaming as it is. I know that you could have been anywhere else, so the fact that you took time to grace us with your presence is greatly appreciated. I want to thank the media and specifically Senator Powell's office for doing such a good job to get the word out to you all to come and make sure that this word is spread throughout the South Florida area. As my time is somewhat limited, I will simply state to you that even though I'm a trial attorney of 14 years, and from time to time my client's interests are directly affected by jury trials, I'm of the opinion that it's definitely not the most important duty or pro uh, service in our, in our lives. I think that as far as serving as a Serving as a jury member, while important, is not the most important thing in the grand scope of things. I think it pales in comparison when you think about our responsibility to provide for our parent, for our family and our parents, to bring food home, to provide for our, our children. I think it pales in comparison when you re realize the importance of developing a strong educational system and an economic system, not just here in Florida, but throughout the U.S. of A. I think it pales in comparison when you think about the importance of having strong government. And it certainly pales in importance when you think about the necessity and the need for all of us to vote. For all of us to vote. I realize that some people may feel that I'm wrong. I'm going to speak about Judge Kasternakis shortly, and he definitely feels that jury service is one of the most essential duties for an American citizen. And I disagree. But if I am wrong, I would like to tell you the following things. Based on my research, approximately 70% to 75% of people who are served with jury summonses don't show up. They don't even show up to the courthouse. Forget about even going upstairs to be potentially considered as a juror. And nevertheless, these people are not incarcerated and they're allowed to go about their life as usual. I think that many, many jurists will tell you and also trial attorneys like myself that one of the biggest issues we face when trying to select a jury is the fact that it's not very diverse. And therefore it makes it very difficult for some to be tried by their who they believe their peers to be. So the question that one would want to ask and the question that should be posed to any judge who thinks about incarcerating somebody for missing jury duty is, if you say you really want diversity, if you say you really want diversity, and if you truly want diversity, how does what happened to DeAndre Somerville, how does what happened to Keith Lattimore or anyone else that I don't really know about at this point, how does their incarceration help increase the likelihood of you having a diverse jury pool? How does that increase the likelihood of anybody serving or showing up in regard to a jury summons? Because now you've already established the precedent that you might end up in cuffs and you are the one that's alleged to have done a crime. You're not the one who asked for a jury trial. You're not the one who was sued for allegedly violating some contract, some issue of tort, whatever the case may be. So unfortunately, I think that what Judge Kastronakis has done is actually hurt our likelihood of having a diverse jury. Which leads me to another point. How easily it is for a person to be incarcerated versus some other things that we take for granted. In my opinion, I'm re I'll represent to you that it's easier to be jailed in Palm Beach County and in the state of Florida at large than it is to purchase an airline ticket. In fact, it's easier to be incarcerated as evidenced by what happened to DeAndre and the other young man whose name I mentioned, then it will be to get candy on Halloween night. It's easier to be jailed than it is to get your voting rights restored. After you've duly served whatever punishments the state of Florida has deemed you required to serve, paid all your court fines, or at least attempted to pay all your court fines and whatever else they threw at you in regard to punishment and supposed rehabilitation. That's a travesty and that's something that we need to address and this issue of Judge Kastronakis' unfitness, to be frank, to preside over jury trials, speak to that. But I also would be remiss if I didn't take time to speak to our great state attorney, Dave Ehrenberg. He's an exceptional man, and I would tell you that basically, basically all of the assistant state attorneys there are very honorable people, very forthright. But I want to speak to their responsibility and also the responsibilities of state attorneys across this state and district attorneys across this country, whether they be federal or state. You have a role to play in this because what happened to DeAndre and what happened to the other gentleman, Keith Lattimore, and many other people who I don't know their names, is caused by, in some situations, your acts of omission and your acts of commission. 
which lead to the scales of justice being constantly tipped adverse to the interests of those who are standing before that judge. And it results in, shall we say, a very combative and hostile environment. And those are words of persons who spoke to me over this past week as far as how they assess the court experience. They feel that it's very and unnecessarily combative and hostile, as if persons are browbeating them, beating them down, talking down to them in a condescending way. And that is not what court is supposed to be about. And so we need to start today in remedying that situation. I also would like to say that in, in tipping the scales to justice the way sometimes some state attorneys do and some assistant state attorneys do, and I'm not representing that Dave Ehrenberg or any of the assistant state attorneys should necessarily do that, but in doing that, you also seem to imply, if not expressly state, that the only way to really improve somebody after they make a mistake is for them to be incarcerated, is for them to be placed on probation. And I'm here to tell you today that if you really want to rehabilitate someone, you first should look to educate them and not incarcerate them. Because putting the, if you will, proverbial economic shackles of financial uh, court costs and state supervision on them, or the actual shackles that they'll face by being placed inside of a jail or a prison, does not in any way increase the likelihood of them being rehabilitated. You actually only serve to potentially break them and increase the likelihood of them doing what you just said you really didn't want them to do. So let's call a thing a thing. As some would say, speak truth to power, and let's address the elephant in the room which in this regard is, in my assessment, based on what I've spoken to Mr. DeAndre Somerville about and speaking to other individuals in this, in this community, is that Judge Kastronakis, presently at least, is unfit to serve on the jury bench. I want you all to make sure that you share this and tell the story the way I'm conveying it to you. I'm not asking for him to be removed from the bench, but I am saying that presently he has shown that he is unfit to serve or preside over jury trials here in Palm Beach County. Now, I also would like to say that why I actually want to actually share information as to why I'm saying this. One thing in, we are trained in law is not just to make base accusations without having facts to back it up. So these are facts. There are a number of, forgive me for sweating, like I said, it's pretty warm out here. There are a number of attorneys who have been held in contempt by not just Judge Kastronakis, but he's the subject of today, so let's talk about Judge John Kastronakis. He has held a number of attorneys, my fellow colleagues, in some situations, friends, held them in contempt of court. And these pe people have a much greater understanding of the legal ramifications of obeying or disobeying a law than someone like DeAndre Somerville, who before this unfortunate incident had never seen the inside of a courthouse. He only picked up two, two traffic tickets. And it's not by all accounts. I represent to you that he's a forthright, constructive man caring for his grandfather, Mr. Bullard, who is here for us today and being a loving and doting son to his mother, his father, stepfather, and all of his brothers and sisters. This is not the face of someone who deserves to be put in jail. This is somebody who made a mistake out of ignorance, not of intentionality. And as such, education versus incarceration should have been the course of action taken by Judge Kastronakis in regard to what happened to DeAndre Somerville. And because of what happened to DeAndre, because of what happened to Mr. Lattimore, and because of the outcry that we've heard through, throughout Palm Beach County from thousands of people and from millions of people across the United States and dare I say across the globe, again, I want to reiterate, Judge Kastronakis needs to be immediately transferred out of the trial division by Chief Judge Krista Marks because he has shown that he is partial. And in fact, he's partial to people of certain socioeconomic classes, case in point, attorneys. Attorneys who have directly violated orders by Judge Kastronakis have not served the first day in jail as a matter of course. They've generally had to serve a fine and maybe write a letter of apology to the judge. What DeAndre had to do, but much less, because they've not been put on the inside of a jail even for one hour. And again, this young man, who when you read the transcript, again, this is not my editorialization, you can read it for yourself. I'm sure you all can read probably better than I do. DeAndre basically said, and if he had had an attorney who could have art, more artfully stated DeAndre's position, was that, hey, judge, I did not appreciate the ramifications of not showing up for trial the next day. I have a part-time job. I'm doing all I can to make ends meet for my grandfather. The money that I make goes to help my grandparents make ends meet. I overslept. I panicked. 
But again, I did not understand that you would see this as a personal slight to you. What was the judge's response to DeAndre's honest confession, if you will, uh, though I don't believe it's confession because it shows that he didn't intentionally disobey the court's ruling. He said, I find that you need to serve 10 days in jail, be in uh, probation for a year, and do all these other things which, I'm just being honest, most people would say are excessive, to say the least. But most importantly, again, I want to stay on point and keep this very tight. Thank you for that so much. He's expressed partiality, which has eroded the community's confidence in him to serve as a trial judge at this point. And so until he ironically can be rehabilitated, justice and equity require that Judge Kastronakis be transferred out of any trial division here in Palm Beach County, which means any circuit court division here in this downtown courthouse to one of our three satellite courthouses, whether it be Palm Beach Gardens, whether it be Delray, or whether it be out in Bell Glade. I thank you for taking time to listen to my statement, and I turn the podium over now to Senator Bobby Powell. Senator. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to thank Attorney Ferguson for kind of putting this together and uh, driving the ship with regard to what has happened. I want to thank all of the elected officials. I want to thank the clergy who are here. But more importantly, I want to thank the citizens from the community who have stood with us with regard to this particular issue. Uh, it was a tough pill to swallow when I opened the Palm Beach Post looking for a negative article on myself and I saw DeAndre's picture. I was upset, uh, my heart was broken, and to see the reason why he was there, uh, I thought and knew it was unacceptable and something had to be done. I've already asked for the Judicial Qualif Qualifications Commission to do an investigation, and I'm hopeful that once they finish their investigation, they will push it up to the Supreme Court and recommend removal. However, that is not the only alternative that I realize I have, and it's not the only thing that could move forward. As I've stated, I am State Senator Bobby Powell, and I'm a member of the legislature. I've got some of my legislative colleagues who are standing here with me today, and I'm willing to talk to members of the Florida House to consider other alternatives to make sure that justice is served. According to Florida's Judicial Code of Conduct, a judge shall perform his duties or her duties without bias, prejudice, and shall not be swayed by public clamor or fear of criticism. I'm of the belief and understanding that Judge Kastronakis, in an unjustifiable manner, moved to unfairly punish DeAndre Somerville for missing jury duty because DeAndre overslept and made it the determination that it, he didn't know how important it was to go to jury, that he would move forward. When DeAndre's day in court came, Judge Kastronakis imposed an excessive yet absurd penalty of 10 days in jail, one year of probation and 150 hours of community service. In addition to the $223 in court costs and in order to write a letter of apology to the court. Despite having no criminal history, no criminal record, and as far as I've known DeAndre, I, I've never even heard him raise his voice. He served 10 days in jail where he witnessed people being beaten. He witnessed a cellmate have a seizure and he worried about the well-being of his grandfather. Now, if that wasn't bad enough, at the hearing to appeal the contempt conviction, Judge Kastronakis uh, did what I would call continued to rub sand into the wound by indicating that DeAndre represented a certain cross-section and he wanted to make an example. Yet by doing that, he again violated the code of judicial conduct. By doing that, he continued to push the issues that he originally violated. And then he reduced this, I'm sorry, not only reduced, rescinded the sentence based on a public outcry and national scrutiny. Apparently, in judges, uh, Judge Kastronaka's eyes, DeAndre had the responsibility 
as he indicated, to represent an entire cross-section. We all represent cross-sections, and that's why the entire community stands up with us today to make sure that this hideous punishment doesn't happen to anyone else. Not just DeAndre, not just Keith Lattimore, but any other person who is absent from jury duty. I mean, the thought of going in and facing a punishment, hopefully that maybe it's a fine, uh, maybe it's to be pushed to another jury, but to walk into the court as a regular young man, a former member of the Men of Tomorrow, not only a drummer in his church, but he's been an usher in his church and a volunteer in his church. To walk in as a regular young man, an innocent young man who has all of his innocence and the rest of his life in front of him and to walk out in handcuffs and to be put behind bars is unconscionable, unthinkable. And at this point, I didn't think that Judge Kastronakis exercised his judicial caution and based on these facts, it's abundantly clear that Judge Kastronakis, of course, has violated the code of judicial conduct in its official duties. And he should be held responsible for his actions. And it's my responsibility as the state senator, as somebody who you all elected to represent you, to make sure that he is held responsible. Before I conclude, I want to raise one more issue. Before before Judge Kastronakis reduced DeAndre's sentence or rescinded it, he wanted to be known that he believed that DeAndre has been rehabilitated. I've known DeAndre for more than a decade, and I can tell you right now, personally, I don't think he's the one who needed to be rehabilitated. After the public outcry, after be plant, being placed on The Daily Show, after being placed in the public scrutiny, I think the real result is Judge Kastronakis has indeed been rehabilitated. I ask you all today, you've seen what has happened. Continue to push. Not only have I written a letter, you also have the ability to write letters. When you see wrong, you don't just let it happen. We talk about a life of service being a life that counts. That's not only for elected officials. It's for each and every one of us in our community because we are our brothers and our sisters keepers and we have to move forward and protect those who can't protect themselves at some point. My name is Bobby Powell Jr. and I will yield the podium to Congresswoman Lois Frankel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. And thank you for letting me be here today um, and I've told Bobby what I was going to be talking about. I, I, first, I just want to make it clear that I personally am not advocating for any action against uh, Judge Karanakis, although I view, I share the view of this community that his treatment of DeAndre was cruel and unjust. I'm not here to defend him. Uh, I'm happy that his record has been appropriately uh, cleared up. I'm, I, I'm here for a different purpose. And that is to stand with one of the best families this community has ever known. I, uh, DeAndre's grand, we're gonna cry, right? All right. DeAndre's grandfather was my uh, chief assistant for eight years during my terms as mayor. He's one of my best friends in life. And uh, I am so blessed to have known this family. Uh, I've been to church with them many times, to their Christmas dinners, to their funerals, to their weddings. I've known DeAndre since he's three years old and my fondest memory is when you fell asleep on the front row when I was being sworn in as mayor. <laughs> he was three years old. I have forgiven you. <laughs> but more importantly, I, I've watched uh, DeAndre grow into a very respectful, law-abiding man. And listen, no one's infallible. DeAndre admitted he made a mistake uh, when he failed to show for a jury duty, a responsibility which he was clearly not res familiar with. And it's, it's understandable that the judge would be angry with the disruption. But with that said, with that said, the delay of court was minor. 
There was no apparent harm to the case. So it is not understandable why a young non-offender was thrown into jail for 10 days, potentially exposed to violent criminals who could rape and beat him. Uh, so I'm going to repeat, in my opinion, in my opinion, the sentence was cruel and unjust and there could have been much more constructive ways to teach him a lesson while sending an important message to the public. The court may have had a well-intentioned purpose. With that said, sadly, understandably, this has resulted in a strong backlash about fairness in the justice system. Let's hope that we've all learned a good lesson. I know that DeAndre has, and he's ready to move on with his life. Thank you. Thank you. I think we have time to open it up for a few questions if anyone from the media would like to pose them. Nope. Yes. He and I spoke earlier. He preferred that I answer the question for him, so if that's okay with you. Okay. Yes. And he specifically said he has no hard feelings towards this crime. Can you explain why he's here today and why he kind of made an example of himself? This is, that is a point about the fact that he should have been, should not have been incarcerated in the first place. He was still processing this. So I understand the media, this is kind of a, this is news. So everybody's putting mics and cameras in his face and asking him questions and he's trying to take the high road. But you all should understand, and DeAndre would want me to tell you, that he's deeply hurt about what happened by this. And he never understood why he would serve jail time for something that, as Congresswoman Frankel said, had a very minor effect on the disposition of that trial. So DeAndre feels, and many other people in this community feel, that Judge Kastronakis' uh, respect, if you will, as a trial judge has been substantially eroded, and that needs to be repaired by him showing rehabilitation over a period of time. Simply rescinding the probation, reducing the fines to zero, won't give DeAndre 10 days back. So as a community, we want to be very sure, damn sure, if you will, that before he ever steps on the trial bench again, that he showed the requisite amount of rehabilitation and contrition before he presides over the next trial. Thank you. Can, can my friend ask a question? Yes. So I'm presently assisting DeAndre with the expunction process. So that's great in one regard, but again, he should not even be in this situation. He did nothing criminally wrong in the first place. As to Judge Kastronakis, we're respectfully requesting that those people who are outraged, as DeAndre and as many in this county are, send a letter to Judge Krista Marks. Call her. Express your concern and your trouble with Judge Kastronakis remaining on the trial bench until he shows the appropriate level of rehabilitation. What that is, I don't know, but I do know that simply. Uh, rescinding this contempt order is not that. And we need to have utter confidence that every judge is above reproach. And unfortunately right now, as it pertains to presiding over jury trials, Judge Kastronox, with all due respect, is not. I just wanted to make a statement, an overstatement. I think this is more than about one judge. Uh, this system is systemically against particular black young men. And people of good will, we need to have uh, procedures in place where just because you put a robe on somebody don't mean they're doing the right thing. We need to monitor, and monitor these, uh, all these judges that that's involved in this activity. All of them need to be monitored. There, there, may, there clearly is an element to that, but from a legal standpoint, DeAndre's position is that the judge has shown partiality to people of certain social economic statuses, namely attorneys, and because of that, his trust his perception of, of impartiality has been substantially re, re, uh, eroded and it needs to be rehabilitated by him serving at some off um, the off site as far as satellite courts go. Yes, ma'am. Can you clarify, is he taking back his apology or is he going to make an apology to them? Whose apology, ma'am? His apology. DeAndre's apology was always that, hey, he's sorry that he was in that situation. He wished it would not have happened again. He never truly admitted that he was contemptuous in his <coughs> behavior. And that's the whole point why an attorney should have been there. DeAndre speaking one language, and with all due respect, Judge Kastronakis was speaking another one. Things are being lost in translation. He's very sorry for having not shown up. He believes that jury duty is very important. Again, it's not the most important thing, as I stated before, but he would never intentionally disrespect Judge Kastronakis or any judge. That's not who he is, and that's not who his family raised him to be.